Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to create your first list in SharePoint using PowerShell. This script that we're looking at now is something I created earlier in previous demos. So if you don't understand this part, then go back to the previous demos. All right, so what we're going to do now is create a new list. And of course, when we're going to be working with SharePoint, then we're going to be mostly using this SharePoint PMP PowerShell Online module. So it it's probably helpful to scroll down here and see all the commands that are available in that module. And as you see, they follow a rather predictable naming standard here. You have, as all PowerShell commands are recommended to be, they start with a verb, the add in this case, and then something that should be added. And then you have the clear, you have the get, you have the set, you have some other things, but it's usually the same syntax. You have, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do it to, right? So that's what we're gonna be doing. So now, as you see, there's lots of things we can do here. We're gonna be working with a list, and you would expect adding lists to be here, but it's not, it's actually here down here under new, new PNP list, okay. Let's click on new PNP list, and there we got the different parameters. So now we could, of course, start typing here. Title, yes, hello world, maybe, world list, like that. Now remember that a list in SharePoint is also a document library and all kinds of lists. So we have to select which template we want to work with. But that have no IntelliSense or anything like that. Even if I type generic, which is a generic list, it doesn't help me. So it's actually better to do this now, and new PNP list, and then we just do the dash for getting the parameters. The first one we want is title, uh, hello world list, there we go. And then the template, and there you see, there we have some IntelliSense, and here we have the full list of different types of templates that we can use. In this case, I'm just gonna use a generic list, and then of course we have this enable content types, we have enable versioning, which always should be there. So let's do that, enable versioning, that should be in there. Let's just check the syntax here, enable versioning, and just insert that and we'll see that the, there we go, enable versioning. You see it doesn't take anything, uh, any parameters. You don't have to set enable versioning equals true or anything like that. You can just do enable versioning, that will, enable it. So let's do that. And let's put it on quick launch also. And just insert that so we can see how that looks. There we go. On quick launch. Same thing. On quick launch, right? There we go. So now if we run that line of code, again by F8, takes a few seconds, and there we go. It's Yeah, no error message or anything. So now if I go back to my site, now I refresh the page and we should have the hello world list there on the quick launch. And if we go into that, there it is. And let's just check that enable versioning is enabled also there. List settings, versioning settings. Yes, create a version each time you get an item. Beautiful, it all works. And there we go. So let's try the other way also, of course, to clean up when we're testing this. Of course, we need to be able to remove stuff also. So let's look at remove. There we go, it's right there. New, remove, right? So let's do that. Uh, and let's click on that to, there we go, identity. Very good. So, and the identity in this case is the name of the list. So we can just do that. Uh, remove, PMP list. There we go. And the identity, that's the default parameter, so we can actually can skip that. There we go. Now if I just run that, there we go. It's gonna give me a confirmation, yes. It's fine, now it's removing that. And let's just go out to the site and see if it's been removed or not. Let's go here, under site contents, and it's gone, very good. And of course, now you can play around with this and just uh, add it and remove it again. Another thing that I wanna show you in terms of discoverability of these things is the get help command. It's really useful. Uh, the get help, you just type that in, get help, and then you type the name of the 
the PowerShell commandlet that you want to use. So if I want to get help about new PMP list, I can just type that in, PMP list. And also I can add the parameter examples because that's what I really want, right? I want to see how this is actually used. So here we have a couple of those. This is a really good one, actually, the URL here, specifying the URL, because, of course, the uh, if you run this again now and create the list, there we go, you see it actually gets a uh, an ugly URL, because I have specified this list name with lots of spaces in it. But you see in the URL to that list, it becomes very ugly with a percent 20 there. So if I specify, uh, let's remove it again, very quickly, it's gone, yes. And of course we can do the confirm, confirm. We can just do false there. So we don't get any confirmation also. That's how you input that, the colon false, if you wanna do the, the wrong thing there, or that the, you do not want to confirm it. All right, so now I wanna specify the URL on this URL. I just want a camel, a regular camel case, of course, like that. So now I can create it again. And as you see, the new list that I just got will have a much, much better URL, of course. Now the old one isn't there, so let's go back there. Fine. And here we go. The hello world list is indeed hello world. Much better URL, right? Yeah. It, might not be super important, but yeah, the little extra touch of class. All right, so that showed you how to both add and remove a SharePoint list using PowerShell. Thank you for watching this demonstration.